ladies, guests, and delegates, with great joy and immense pleasure, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all the participants for this eighth international webinar series. Today, the international webinar on international accreditations by AHPGS standards, criteria, and procedures to be delivered by the young uh, eminent speakers, Ms. Lina Scannell and Corina Setter. Both are from APGS Accreditation Agency, Germany. Welcome you, Madam, on behalf of our NAC and India. Now, my request, Dr. B.S. Ponmudiraj, Advisor NAC, to briefly give the introduction about the program and welcome the August gathering and dignitaries. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vishnu Bahesh. It is a pleasure to welcome people on the live Cisco WebEx, as well as YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the eighth international NAC webinar series, which, under the leadership of Professor S.C. Sharmaji, our Honorable Director NAC has initiated with the INQUAHE board members, APQN board members, INQUAHA board members, and all quality assurance agencies across the globe, inviting people to learn during this COVID pandemic period and post pandemic period what is happening on accreditation quality assurance across the globe in your country, in your agency, as well as from our agency. So, as you may be aware, that we have organized 500 such webinars for international. This is eighth international webinar in the series. With this in the background, we have for every country, we have continued to have some more for every month. People, please do join and look into our website for updates. I welcome each and every one of you, especially the main speaker, Dr. Lena Chanel and Dr. Corina for joining us. I welcome the ICT team, Prof. Samyo Kumar Rath and Dr. Samuel, and the coordinator, Dr. Barikan K. Kamble. Especially welcome the Director NAC, and I kindly request the Director NAC to say a few words, please. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Ms. Corina Sitter and Ms. Lena Chanel. I apologize if I have wrongly. Uh, pronounced, uh, but uh, I am really uh, thank you, Dr. Ponmudi Raj. Uh, I am uh, very happy that our young assistant advisors now, who is who is conducting, is Dr. Kamble and Dr. Vishnu Mahesh and Vinita Sahu, Ruchi Tripathi, and uh, all these people are doing wonderful, wonderfully. And this is the eighth webinar, and. Uh, uh, and the session is International Accreditation by AHPGS Standards, Criteria and Procedure. Well, uh, in NAC, there is a very good history about international uh, collaboration, international uh, uh, collaboration program. I understand uh, one Dr. Stella who was here, she initiated and Dr. Jagannath Patil, our advisor, took it forward to a large extent and brought a good name to NAC. And now our uh, young assistant advisors, Dr. Vishnu Mahesh and Dr. Kamble, all of them are working very hard under the able assistance of Dr. Amai Kumar Rath, who has come from uh, the eastern part of India uh, on deputation and uh, ably assisted by Dr. Samuel. Well, uh, you see, the, we had a subjective type of an assessment and accreditation and uh, we have learnt a lot and picked just as Constitution of India while writing uh, in 1945 till 1947, you know, all good things from various uh, countries were taken and, and such a beautiful uh, Constitution of India uh, has been given to us by uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkarji like that. And uh, with, with the staff of NAC, 
advisors, deputy advisors, and assistant advisors have done a wonderful job in bringing out a document called as revised accreditation framework, where 70% is by qualitative and 30% is by quantitative. And of course, uh, the other details are all, always there in the website. The main aspect is the NAC is done only for students and quality of the higher education. Therefore, student satisfaction survey is also included there. And we at NAC are very much interested in having international, knowing about international accreditation processes and procedures. Well, uh, Ms. Corina Sutter and Ms. Lena Chanel, I, I earnestly make a request. It is not only just giving an international webinar. We should have a continued interaction by way of a small project with our assistant advisors and, and our staff of NAC, a small collaborative project for six months or one year, uh, maybe by joint funding or whatever it is. And such important activities will take us further to have more comradeness of the two countries as well as to understand better each other. I think uh, uh, this will happen eventually once we get to know each other. Uh, the acquaintance, this is just an acquaintance and once we build up this acquaintance, probably we can take it to the next level and we also would like to invite you to India and uh, and 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 see and learn or or study or I I'm, I'm sorry not learn study our uh, process and procedures of NAC and that would be really great and it will be a good initiative to start with. Therefore, I once again compliment um, uh, Dr. Vishnu Mahesh, Dr. Kamble, and all my dearest colleagues of NAC who have been associated with this. Uh, particular activity. I also ta thank Dr. Amai Kumar and Dr. Samuel for all the efforts that uh, they have been taking during COVID and, and even now I am sure such activities will take us a long way and help NAC also in understanding better about the international accreditation process and procedures. With these few words, I, I conclude my speech. I wish uh, all the delegates and I welcome all the delegates. I wish uh, Ms. Corinna Sitter and, and Ms. Lena Channel uh, all the very best for the lecture and, uh, and, and thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful, enlightened opening remarks. Thank you very much, sir. So now uh, moving ahead with the program. Before starting the lectures, I should I, I, I am very happy to introduce the today's both the speakers to you all. Especially in the first, uh, I am uh, giving brief introduction about the Lina Chanel. She is actually uh, currently working in APGS accreditation agency for uh, study programs in health and social sciences in uh, Friesburg, uh, Germany. Uh, she actually completed uh, uh, her education in sociology, especially in the focus of family, migration, and education. So now uh, she is a, a full-time position as a quality assurance consultant in APGS. Uh, she is actually working on the area of preparation of application documents, consulting universities, planning and execution of on-site visits, writing of expert reports, implementation of international accreditation procedures, and writing thematic analysis. Uh, thank you, Madam, accepting our invitation. Uh, another uh, uh, today's uh, young speaker, uh, uh, that is Corinna Sutter. She is also working with APGS accreditation agency from past uh, uh, one year. So she is also completed her bachelor degree in social sociology and political science and master degree in sociology. Presently, she is handling the implementation of international accreditation procedures, preparation of application documents, and publication of thematic analysis, and consulting higher education institutions. 
once again thank you very much madam for accepting our invitation also now the session is yours you can uh, 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 take uh, uh, 40 to 45 minutes both you can explain the um, accreditation procedures what you are adopting in your apgs thank you very much madam uh, i request lena chanel madam to start thank you thank you very much thank you also for the invitation and uh... We would also be really happy to be able to travel to India when it's possible to uh, again and to get to know your universities and your culture. And um, I think Mrs. Sutter is not able to join the meeting. I don't know why I'm in contact with uh, uh, with someone from NAC, but I think she is not in the meeting yet. Is that correct? Can you see her? Dr. Samuel will help Lena. Dr. Samuel is online and he will be able to, DAC ICT will be able to help. And okay. Dr. Amyo is also there, Dr. Amyo Kumar, Rath, our advisor, ICT. Okay, so to, immediately she will be able to join. Okay, so should we uh, wait a few more minutes because um, originally she wanted to, to give our presentation or shall we just go on? Samuel, can you keep one more link to her? Sir, I'm just working out with her. Uh, another five minutes, it might be, uh, she will okay. be online. Meanwhile, okay. maybe if there is any other presentation, you can just move forward so that her part will be done later. Okay, okay so now, um, originally just Mrs. Sutter is going to present and I wanted to answer the Q&A afterwards. So, um, Maybe we will just wait two more minutes, and if she's not able to join, I will just um, hold the presentation. Is that okay for you? Madam, can you call her to join? Already, the link is with her. Just you can call her once. One I time. will call. Her. Yeah, I can call her. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Madam, we are sending the link to Madam again. Uh, just uh, you, you, you can inform her to join again. Yeah, yeah. She keeps telling me that um, it tells her that the event is blocked and she cannot join because there are no more participants accepted. But what happened, Lena? She is uh, uh, joining in the yesterday's test link. Mm -hmm. She may be trying the yesterday's test link. Uh, Lena, can you find out if there is any alternate mail ID? Um, no. So, but if it's not possible, I will just give the presentation. So we were not uh, waiting. Okay. okay. Uh, can you type the text there if there is alternate mail ID? Sorry? If there is alternate mail ID, can you just text it there in the chat? Okay. So I think I will just um, start with the presentation so we have we don't have to wait any longer. Um, Okay, can you see my presentation now? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> 
Okay, so now you should uh, see it, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, full screen. Okay, so very sorry about the chaos. Uh, I'm just trying to give the presentation to you now. And we, we decided to give you just a short overview about um, how we work and who we are. And um, yeah, we are happy if you have any questions for us after this, and we are happy to answer you. Um, below, you can see our contract um, contact data as well as our uh, mail address. So in case of any questions after this presentation and after this webinar, please feel free to contact us every time. So the presentation is called International Accreditation by AHPGS Standards, Criteria and Procedures. And um, I will just start with the presentation outline. First of all, I would like to tell you something about um, our agency itself, about our profile, about our fields of activity and also the services we offer. And after that, we will focus more on the accreditation itself, the procedures we uh, do, the costs for the accreditation and also the criteria we apply. So the AHPGS promotes the quality and transparency in higher education institutions and their study programs. And um, the AHPGS is specialized in the accreditation of study programs and um, the accreditation uh, wait, and higher education institutions in numerous educational fields, but as the only agency in Germany with a particular focus on health and social sciences. And the types of accreditation are carried out, um, are tailored to the university's needs and wishes, of course. So our work focuses on guaranteeing uniform internationally competitive standards for a wide range of degrees by supporting quality assurance and development. The AHPGS is a German accreditation agency located in Freiburg and established in 2001. It is authorized by the German Accreditation Council. Um, because of this authorization, we hold the right to award the official seal of the council and we are endorsed to accredit study programs and universities in Germany. We are also listed in the European Quality Assurance Register and are member of several renowned quality assurance networks, including the ECA, ENQA, TENQA and INQUA. Um, this is also why we are able to uh, conduct international accreditation procedures. We are also a corresponding member of the German Public Health Association and we are a member of the World Federation of Public Health Associations. So the AHPGS has been active at more than 150 higher education institutions and um, up to now we accredited and evaluated more than 1,500 study programs. Our international activities include accreditation and evaluation procedures in Austria, Hungary, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Oman, Romania, Slovenia, Switzerland, Thailand, Turkey, and um, of course, also, we hope to be able to conduct international accreditation in India soon. So the services we offer for the study programs at higher education institutions, it is possible to accredit uh, the accreditation of one study program and also a cluster accreditation of similar study programs at one or even more faculties in one common on-site visit. For higher education institutions, it is possible to carry out an institutional audit. And of course, we always offer consultancy upon request. So our fields of activity um, uh, cover a wide range. We do um, programs in medicine, social work, health sciences, business administration, nursing, and uh, many more. Okay. So the accreditation at international universities proceeds according um, to the criteria, international program accreditation developed in close accordance with German criteria and based on the standards and guidelines for quality assurance in the European higher education area, also known as ESG, uh, which are established by the European Association for Quality Assurance in Higher Education. Um, if applicable, we can also take national criteria into account upon request. 
So let me tell you something about our procedural steps in the international accreditation. So in the preparatory phase, um, we get an inquiry from you. We send you an offer for the accreditation of the one or more study programs you want to accredit. And um, then we will send you a draft contract. And after the contract is signed, the institution submits its self-evaluation report, which gives us information about your study programs and also additional necessary documents. Um, between signing the contract and the submission of the self-evaluation report, there is no, no deadline. You could just hand your documents in whenever you are ready. So after that, um, there is a review and supplementation of the application documentation and also a preliminary draft evaluation of the application by the expert group. Um, after we reviewed all your documents, we will send you some open questions um, which you are able to answer in case to get to know your study program even better. After that, we compose a summary for the accreditation application on the basis of the documentation submitted by you. Um, after that, the AHPGS Accreditation Commission nominates the expert group to proceed with the external evaluation and the on-site visit. Then we organize the documents submitted by you and forward them together with the summary to the expert, uh, to the expert group. And after that, the most important step, the on-site visit of the expert group takes place at your university. Um, in general, we estimate, uh, depending on the distance of the university, we estimate two days for the on-site visit and the expert group for one study program uh, consists of uh, two experts from higher education, one for the um, professional experience and one student. And of course, um, when there are more study programs, the expert group gets bigger. So after the on-site visit took place, the expert group composes an expert report, which is forwarded to us, and we forward this report to the institution for approval. Um, there you have the option to issue a response opinion to the expert report if needed. And then the final step uh, takes place. The accreditation commission of the AHPGS reviews the application contents, the summary, the expert report and the response opinion. And based on these, the accreditation commission reaches a decision. The final expert report containing the accreditation decision will be forwarded to the university together with the accreditation certificates. So here you can see an overview of the steps I was explaining. Um, in general, we estimate 12 months from the submission of the self-evaluation report to the decision of our accreditation commission. And during this time, we will, of course, stay in close contact to you in order to get a um, um, positive decision of our accreditation commission. So let me tell you something about the costs for the accreditation procedure. Um, the fee for the accreditation is set together out of a basic fee and a procedure fee. The basic fee is similar to the national basic fee, which is 50,000 euro for one study program and 5,000 euro for each further program. So it is, of course, financially advantageous for you to accredit more similar pro uh, programs in one common on-site visit. The procedure fee contains travel costs, accommodation costs, expenses and professional fees for the experts and also everything else. So we always offer a full cost package to the university to avoid any additional costs during the process so that you, um, you know just at the very beginning by signing the contract how much money do you need to spend. So for the accreditation of study programs at higher education institutions, um, we apply seven criteria, uh, which namely are aims and implementation, structure of the study program, admission and feasibility, examination system and transparency, teaching staff and material equipment, and quality assurance, and last but not least, gender equality and equal opportunities. So few words for the to the criteria itself so at aims and implementation it is um we want to see if um, the study program pursues specific qualification objectives um if you have defined learning outcomes and also um, if the program was designed by involving students and other stakeholders 
The structure of the study program uh, contains the study program aims to provide students with specialized and interdisciplinary knowledge as well as professional, methodological and general competences. Uh, we want to see if you have a module related examination system and also if your, um, if your study program is student centered. For the admission and feasibility, the admission requires, requirements are transparent. It is important that the feasibility of the study program is guaranteed and also that student support services are provided by the university. For the examination system and transparency, it is important that the examinations are focused on students' knowledge and competences and that the university has documented and published the regulations concerning the assessment, conversion and recognition of competences, credits and periods of study acquired and completed by students at other institutions. So for the teaching stuff and the material equipment, we want to see if you have a sufficient number of human resources assure the successful implementation of the study program and also um, appropriate funding to provide the necessary learning resources and material equipment. Then it is also important that you have a concept of quality assurance in the education process as well as teaching and research and that you carry out internal and external quality assurance procedures. So last but not least, the gender equality and equal opportunities. Um, there it is important that the university's actions on the provision of gender equality and promotion of equal opportunities for students with particular living circumstances are implemented in a transparent way. So I hope I was able to give you a real short overview of who we are and how we work. And um, yeah, I would be happy to answer your questions right now. And if you don't have any questions, uh, even better, but you can feel free to contact us anytime, even on phone or via email. It is also no problem. Thank you very much. I request uh, participants, if you are uh, ready to ask some questions, you can raise your hands virtually. We, we will unmute you and you can ask the question. Or otherwise, you can chart your question. You can type your question in the chat box so that we will read that question to uh, Lena Chanel Madam. She will answer. Participants, the session is open to discussion. I request uh, um, Mr. Sham Samuel, uh, ICT division, to moderate the question and answer. Yeah, uh, Mega Gulwani, you may ask a question. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sirs. Uh, it's a nice opportunity that we are getting. Uh, to be acquainted with the international standards of accreditation. Uh, just I have one query that uh, it is organized by NAC. So uh, is it in coordination with NAC or is it a, a separate entity that they are going to accredit it, our institution that we have to apply separately or through NAC? Thank Shall you. I answer? Yeah. Um, so this depends on, on what do you want. If you are already accredited by NAC and seek for just international accreditation on top of it, uh, we will carry uh, this out by ourselves. But we also, for example, in Romania, we work together with the National Accreditation Institution and there we do the accreditation for them. So it depends on what do you want. If you are already national accredited, we can just do the international accreditation on top, but of course we can also cooperate with NAC if wanted. Okay, so what's the role of NAC, sir? I mean, sir, uh, I would like to take. In the accreditation, what's the role of NAC? Is NAC going to interfere something or not? In this national no, no. international. I mean, uh, no, the, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. See, the purpose of conducting this particular uh, webinar is to, to make uh, everyone understand what are the international practices, how the international agencies they conduct accreditation in their, uh, I mean, universities and in their colleges. 
this is the way we are trying to conduct and trying to uh, <clears throat> i mean uh, our uh, people from india from other countries also they are participating that is the way there is no link as such between uh, our agencies with uh, the agencies of european which uh, lena talked about as of now Samuel, we'll go to next question. Yeah. Pio Hassan is there. You may ask the question, sir. Hello. Pio Hassan, sir. Yeah. Uh, you may proceed. Sir, my question is, uh, as per your uh, accreditation criteria, you have seven criteria, right? Yeah. And under the seven criteria, is there any relative weightage of the different criteria? Or no. Or all the criteria? or all the criteria have the same weight as number 1 number 2 because in in the accreditation uh, there are two important components one is the teachers and another is the uh, equipments and here as per the criteria both have been put in under one head um so there are no additional criteria these seven are all the criteria we have and they are always the same because they are um established after the european standards and guidelines and um if i the second question i i didn't understand understand quite well did you ask what about if you don't have a uh, sufficient teaching staff or what was the second question again Uh, sorry for the interruption madam so now okay. corina sector madam is joined just now uh, can we request uh, uh, corina madam to uh, present her uh, uh, topic then uh, in the last we can have the discussion uh, sorry my colleague already presented everything she did she did the whole path because we thought okay, okay. i'm not able to okay. join yes yes okay okay thank you madam uh, then uh, we can take some more questions from the participants Hello. Usman. Yes. Yeah, Hello, Dr. M. Usman speaking from Kerala. I have one query only. What is the outcome of the accreditation in terms of graded stars, etc.? So, how you, what is the ranking or grading, something like that? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, Ms. Sutta, you wanted to answer? Yeah, sure. So there are three possible outcomes for the decision. There are three possible decisions. It's either um, the accreditation without conditions, the accreditation with conditions, or the denial of the accredit accreditation, which basically doesn't happen because we try to stay in close contact with our partners and our universities. So we make sure the accreditation is not denied in the end. So that's the grading system. There are three possible outcomes. Um, and as I said, it's it's usually not happening that accreditation from our side or from our accreditation commission is denied. And also the outcome for the international accreditation is um, if you are asking what is it for, we compare your study program with international wide study programs and we guarantee that your study program fulfills the criteria which which all the study programs in the european higher education institutions has to fulfill so your study program is then international competitive and um, also it could be a benefit for your students if they want to come to europe and um, uh, do their postgraduate study programs for example uh, it shows that the undergraduate program, for example, which we accredited, fulfills international competitive standards. What is the validity of the accreditation period? How many years could be valid? The first accreditation uh, is valid for five years, and the re-accreditation, if we come back after five years, will be valid for seven years. There is no more questions, sir. Yeah, yeah, can I, I ask a question? Like, yeah. Yes. 
uh, Lena and others, Lena and Corina, my question is like, uh, suppose in India, Indian institutions, if they go for accreditation, if they go invite your uh, accreditation agency, what are the benefits they get? And similarly, in your country also, what are the benefits the institutions get after accreditation from the agency? Um, so this was I uh, what I was wanted to to tell you um, before. So the benefit of the of the international accreditation is just that that you get certified that your study program is international competitive and it fulfills the standards um, needed in the European uh, higher education institutions. And so if um, we just accredit your undergraduate program, for example it is easier to you to do postgraduate study programs in Europe because it is guaranteed that your bachelor program fulfills the standards needed. In Germany, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, ah, okay. So in Germany, it's mandatory to do accreditation. So that's how the German education or higher education system works. So um, all the universities are obliged to accredit their study programs or their universities, depending on mostly the size of the university. And um, internationally, it's very beneficial for the students mainly. And also, of course, it's beneficial for the university to be um, international accredited. Yeah, that's, that's the main focus we are here. Yeah. Lena, and for Corina, example, can I ask one question? Uh, yeah. US is a government uh, uh, organization or is it a privately funded organization? Yours, uh, we are we are all um, we are not governmental because as we are private funded and also we are not um, how is it called? We are not allowed to to benefit from the costs we do. So everything we're not a non profit organization basically. Non -profit organization. Sorry, okay, non profit organization. Uh, you are on sitely you are going to visit the institutions, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you are only going or you are any sending any ambassadors or any professors or any vice chancellors like that, university people? Yeah, of course. So these are the, uh, the expert group. Um, they are they are um, rating your, your study program and they, they are looking at the criteria. We just help you to to organize the on-site visit. We help you with the documents. We tell you if we need any further information for the expert group. But in the end, the expert group composes the expert report and based on the expert report, the commission decides. So we are just helping out there while the whole process is going on. Yeah, we are basically the ones connecting uh, you, the university, and the agency. So the legal status, that's what we are doing. Uh, there is a question on the chat. Let me read out. Is it institute, institute accreditation or program accreditation or both needs the same time and what is eligibility to apply? And can any one of you respond to this? Uh, yeah, so um, we can do we can do both. We can do program accreditation and we can do institutional accreditation. Um, we can also do a mix of it. So if you want to if you want to uh, look at your quality assurance system and also, for example, for one further study program, we can do also that. But um, normally we do the program accreditation international. And um, yeah, Rina, do you? want to add anything it always it always depends on the university's needs and wishes um, we are able to do both so international accreditation or program accreditation is a lot more requested um, but for example if we do many program accreditations at one university or at one institution at some point uh, we do recommend to do um, an institutional evaluation because it's it's easier for us the process and it's, it's usually beneficial for the university as well so um, mainly we do program accreditations but um, also institutional evaluations are very helpful 
Yeah, and um, the second question was about the eligibility to apply. Um, there is none. So as soon as you are a university in your country and that you have study programs which are like fulfill the national criteria, um, you can just apply for the international accreditation, and we will help you to get it and tell you what you what do you what you need more to fulfill it. But there is so you just need a university. That's it. Another one question. Another one question. You are giving only accredited or not accredited, right? Only binary accreditation. Or you are giving grades. We sorry, the question was if you if we okay, after accreditation, just you are giving institution as an accredited or not accredited. Yeah. yeah. Whether you are giving any grades a rank no there is no rank but we will as as mrs sutter said we the goal is to 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 give you an accreditation and the accreditation could be given to you under circumstances so that you have to fulfill um to, to fulfill some conditions after nine months or we just give you recommendations and we will check after two and a half years roundabout if you fulfill um, if, or if you did come after some of our recommendations. So there's just a, a short follow up, but um, you don't have to do a self evaluation report again or anything. We're just contacting you and asking you how you're developing. And um, yeah, so the accreditation is just valid for five years. We will contact you after two and a half about how you're doing. And um, the accreditation is either with conditions who has to fulfill, has to be fulfilled after nine months or with recommendations which you could fulfill. So, of course, the, so of course, the accreditation without. Uh, then, how do you compare the institution uh, or distinguish in the institution which is better or which is uh, uh, the quality is less? How you are distinguishing between the good and the poor institution? Hmm. That's what I was about to say. Um, of course, the best possible outcome is um, to be accredited without conditions. So that means you're basically having a perfect program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. And also, the expert reports are published on our homepage and also in the in the ECAR register. So you could just um, just read about the performance of the higher education institution. How many such accreditors and agencies you have? Like in your country, like you have multiple agencies for accreditation? Yeah, we have, we have uh, yeah. eight agencies or nine, I think. And uh, but as I mentioned in the presentation, we are the only one with the particular focus on health and social sciences, which means um, that of course we can do all the programs, but we have the, the the best experts as for the health and social sciences study programs. Can I ask uh, one question? Of course. Yeah. I, I Please, Madam Richard, Madam, you can ask. Yes. Actually, as you mentioned, you have seven criteria. Uh, my question is what in this seven criteria? You have any measurable uh, way like that, maybe either in quantitative terms or the qualitative terms or both or anyone? You got it, my questions. Uh, what adaptability you are going to adopt like that uh, quantitative measure or the qualitative measure under the, this seven criteria as you mentioned and you have also explained there is sub point some under each criteria. So how you, go, you are going to measure only the qualitative measure things are the quantitative how you are going to measure? That is my question. There are uh, quantitative measurements, for example, for teaching staff. So we do have a relation between um, the quantity of students and teaching staff, for example. So there's, it's a wide range. And if you're somewhere in between, it means that you're either better or you're either taking care of um, your students or sometimes there are there is less teaching stuff for for a lot of students so that's that's the quantitative measurements we do and there are in each criteria there are a few that's just one example um, but also 
Um, during the on-site visit, we talked to the different um, staff members. We talked to the presidents, usually of the universities, and also to the students. So that's more of a qualitative approach um, to see if you fulfill all the criteria. So that's more in an out in, in sort of conversational way. Yeah. Yeah, and also for the for the measurable quantity of the criteria, um, we contact you um, in advance of the on-site visit. So because we can tell you like your faculty to student ratio, for example, is pretty good, or you need to improve it. And for the quality, the expert re uh, the expert group is um, is at your university because we can't um, we can't um, tell you about the quality of your study program. This is why we have the experts who can also compare it to the study programs in the European uh, area and uh, they tell you about the quality and we tell you something about the quantity. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I, I see that there is another question in the chat or more three questions the first is how much marks for total assessment um this depends on on your study programs um for as, as i said it is financially advantageous for you to accredit more similar programs in one common site visit because the most expensive part of the accreditation process is um the the travel costs and the accommodation costs and the expert fees and if we do the um the on-site visit for example for five study programs in one common on-site visit as i told you the basic fee is just fifteen thousand for one and then five for each further so it is better for you to accredit more programs in once and to give you um i cannot give you an exact um amount of, of uh, money now but yeah if you can talk if you contact us we will send you an executive summary which you can fill in and after based on these we will send you an offer for the accreditation and yeah, it depends on on many factors for example if the study programs are different from each other or if they are in a similar field for example if they are in one faculty if it's the medical faculty and we look at more than one program um it's more likely that the experts are the same for more than one program. So there are a lot of factors to take into consideration when it comes to the fees. Yeah. And also there is a question about um, who will be the experts Indian or from your side. They will be from our side, but they will be like international experts. So we have um, a lot of experts from Germany, of course, but also from Switzerland, Austria, and also some English speaking experts. But of course, the whole on site visit will be conducted in English. Uh, Samuel, sir, some uh, virtual hands are raised. So if you can unmute them, uh, they can ask one or two questions. Samuel, are you there? Habib? Yeah, you can unmute uh, the participants. Yeah, hello. Yes. Am I audible? You can't, yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, my question is to Honorable Lina, ma'am, that is there any importance given to artificial intelligence in your accreditation framework? Hello, should I repeat uh, my yes, question? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. No, um, okay. Should I repeat the question, please? Um, no, no, it's all right. Um, so artificial intelligence, um, we actually, actually, no, we never had any okay. anything to do with it, to be honest. It's not part of our accreditation process. I see. I mean, maybe my, maybe my colleague can 
No, we just, what we do take into account, of course, is uh, your research um, activities at your university. And um, of course, th this would be um, uh, an impressive aspect of the, of, the, of the research theme. And it would also be um, um, explored in the, in the expert report and, and appreciated. But um, up until now, we never had to do anything. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Radha, Dr. Radha Gautam, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Uh, namaste. Yes, sir. So it is a really very enlightening uh, session, especially question and answers. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask about some best practices, which uh, both of uh, the panelists can suggest in global context. We are having in NAC has actually suggested many best practices in each criteria. So my question is that what sort of global uh, best practices would you please suggest? Thank you for giving me a chance to ask question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So the best practice for each criteria is, of course, difficult. But if you will look on our homepage for the international accreditation procedures, we will have the expert re reports for every country and every accreditation we conducted. And for example, for the um, for the medical study programs, the universities in Saudi Arabia are, for example, pretty pretty uh, well equipped. And uh, yeah, so the, the, the resources, the material resources and the teaching staff in Saudi Arabia for the medical programs is, is, an, is a good example to, to be on the, on the higher level. But um, if you would like to get an accreditation with us, it is no problem to, to give a workshop before you f uh, fulfill your self-evaluation report. So we can just um, tell you again to every criteria what do we need to know? How should you how should you just um, present it on your self evaluation report? And also, what documents do we need? So yeah, we can do a workshop um, before the self evaluation report submission, so we can help you with that. Uh, uh, whether the report submitted by the institutions whether it's available publicly, like uh, anybody wants, they can download and see the what is happening in the institutions. Whether it's available public. Yeah, it is published on our homepage, so everyone can can read about the successful accreditation process. And um, also, as we are a member of the um, of ECAR, the register for the European uh, International Accreditations, you can also. Um, we can also uh, publish it on on this website, so you are you are listed in the European Register and also on our homepage. I don't find more questions. Uh, maybe I'll request. A, a, yeah, you can just take it forward, Vishnu Mahesh. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, now we are at the end of the webinar. Uh, may I request Dr. D.K. Kamble, Assistant Advisor, NAC to uh, propose a vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rishnumesh. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. Respected Director, sir, today's speaker, participants, all advisors and my dear colleagues. On this occasion, it gives me immense pleasure to propose Hot of Thang. Eighth series webinar that is on international accreditation by AHPGS standards, criteria and procedures. First of all, I am very much thankful to our Honorable Director Professor S. S. Sharma sir for his valuable support and encouragement to conduct this webinar. On behalf of NAC family, it is my pleasure to convey my heartfelt thanks to all the participants who attended this program from various parts of the country, India and abroad. 
I am very much thankful to Miss Corina Satyar Madam and Miss Lina Sanchenel for giving an excellent presentation about international accreditation by AHPGS standards, criteria, and procedures. I am very much thankful to Dr. Amya Kumar Sir, advisor, and Mr. Samuel Sir, Dr. B.S. Padmudira Sir, to analyze for host this webinar successfully. I'm, my sincere thanks goes to all the advisors, official staff, ICT team of the NAC, their motivation and support to make this program grand success. With this brief proposed vote of thanks, we conclude uh, my vote of thanks here and we wind up this program here. Thank you one and all.